Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Mama Genius Festival. We are reporting live from the Life Clinic. <laughs> Um, why not? You know, this is mom life, right? But you know what we have on to us today? I didn't want to miss this because I've already scheduled with Jackie. Is we have three wonderful, wonderful youth speakers that Jackie's going to bring on. And I just want to introduce who Jackie is. Jackie is a woman to my own soul who has been helping you get their own voice. <laughs> She's still laughing at me saying where I'm reporting life from. I'm not hiding anything. This is this is mom life, right? We're, we're sharing it like it is. But we're... <laughs> It is funny, but I'm really, truly honored that Jackie's here to share her youth speakers with us, including my son will be on, on Wednesday as well. But really what this is, is about getting youth their own voice, really speaking out. And on that note, we're also bringing this to Tanzania. We are bringing the youth voices and trying to reach the, the, the worldwide with this. With Mama Genius Hub going worldwide, um, Speak Lead Project going worldwide. And so, I'm, let me just let Jackie tell us a little bit about herself um, before we go into a little bit telling more about Tanzania. Go, welcome, Jackie. <laughs> Thank you, Michelle. I really appreciate your dedication to all of this. And yes, I am Jackie <laughs> Bailey. I am the founder of a nonprofit that's called the Speak, Feed, Lead Project. And five or so years ago, we realized the importance of giving kids an opportunity to feel seen, heard, and respected and how much that grows their self-worth bank account. <laughs> and so since then, we have been not only teaching kids how to discover their unique message and then tools of communication to help them to deliver that message well. Now we're putting them out there on stages and they are shining brightly and they are so being brightly. seen and they are being heard and they are being respected. And I'm so grateful to you, Michelle, for giving three of those youth speakers today an opportunity to shine on your stage. So thank you so much for that. I'm so excited. And on that note, we're just gonna go into a little brief, um, a little bit more about what the Tanzania project is. So bear with me as I switch over to that. Have you ever been afraid to raise your hand in class or apply for the school play? I know I have but not since I've joined the Speak, Feed, Lead project. The Speak, Feed, Lead project is now going to Tanzania to help the youth there get their voice heard. We need your help to give a donation. Any donation counts. If it's $5 or $100, any donation will help us be able to inspire the youth and change their lives and give them the power they need to speak from their hearts and give them their voice. As, as we ask for a donation for this project, we also want to pass that voice and message along to you as well as bringing more connection to your family. And so we want to provide a guide for you to bring meaningful connections between you and your kids, what we call a morning circle. And it inspires you to go through and really conversate with your kids in a five to 10 minute fashion that really starts to bring deep conversations. We provide the directions for how to do it along with the, the cards you can print yourself and create the deep questions such as, what does it mean to be yourself? And you'll be surprised as you go around doing this process, how it starts to just naturally start to open up more and more conversations even throughout the day. So we wanna bring the voice to everyone. All we request is for a donation to our Tanzania project, and we will send you the details to how to make your own circles and get your own cards as well. So please click the link below and make the donation that you feel comfortable with and we will send these materials to you. Thank you. So welcome back. Um, and Jackie's nice. gonna introduce our first speaker. Yeah, that was great. Thanks, Michelle. Um, I am delighted to introduce to you Uma Bambrew. Uma came to our programs when she was just a nine-year-old and she was excited about speaking. We taught her some basic skills, allowed her to discover her unique message and today she's shared it on, I don't know, a dozen summits. She is a TEDx speaker. She is a best-selling author and she's authored two books and she has been to Los Angeles, and she has given her keynote speech on an in-person stage to thousands of people that were there in person as well as online. She's incredible, and she is only in sixth grade. <laughs> so 
until after all of that, that she's only in sixth grade. <laughs> and so her presentation today to all of you moms is Moms Push So We Can Persevere. So I am delighted to welcome Uma Bambrou to the stage. Welcome Uma to the stage. We're so excited to have you here. I'm so impressed and I cannot wait to hear your message. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here. Well, we are going to leave and give Uma the entire state. You're done. Thank you again, Uma, for joining us. One of my earliest memories with my mother involves a car ride where I was just a wide-eyed four-year-old. It was a typical day filled with the innocence and wonder that only a child's world can hold. Yet, within this normal day, an extraordinary lesson awaited me. One that would shape the very core of my understanding of self and my own voice. We were on our way home from an event. The trees outside were swaying with the wind. However, the inside was not as peaceful. My baby sister, a mere six months old at the time, was throwing a huge fit. Her cries rang throughout the car. My mother was visibly frazzled. Determined to get home quickly, she began to speed. As we went along the road, a few minutes later, we got pulled over. A police officer approached our vehicle with purposeful strides. With a mixture of fear and curiosity, I watched as the officer asked about our reason for speeding. It was in that moment that I, amidst all the tension, had a realization. Glancing at my mother, I saw the exhaustion on her face. And in that instant, a surge of courage ran through me and I decided to say something. It was me, I said, my voice confident. I really wanted to get home. It was all my fault. The, officer, the officer's stern look softened, replaced by a look of empathy directed towards my mother. In that fleeting exchange, I understood the power of words, the ability to alter perceptions and shape stories. Though I really was just trying to get home in that moment, that was a foundation for many more things to come. As I got older, the significance of that day became increasingly apparent. It was more than just a child's words. It was a profound lesson in empowerment. From the tender age of four, my mother had subtly instilled with me, within me the notion that my voice held weight, that my words possessed the power to influence and affect change. In choosing silence over saying something, my mom taught me a lesson that will always be applicable. She taught me that silence can be a form of strength, a deliberate, a deliberate choice to empower others. But more importantly, she taught me that my voice, no matter how small, could be a catalyst for change. Fast forward to 2022. Amid the pandemic, life took on a new rhythm, confined to the digital realm. With the shift to online school, social interactions were very limited to virtual space. The use of my voice dwindled down to the occasional classroom discussion or family conversation. It was during this time of uncertainty that my mother recognized the importance of nurturing my ability to use my voice, the importance of being able to share my message to an audience. At the young age of nine, the prospect of enrolling in public speaking courses did not exactly thrill me. To my young mind, it seemed like just another extracurricular activity. I begrudgingly went along with, it, along with it. Initially, the classes were a blur of unfamiliar terms and exercises. I thought it was quite boring, leaving me feeling confused by all this added information. Concepts like projection and conversation seemed irrelevant to me in the grand scheme of things. Yet, as time passed by, I grew more accustomed to the lessons. I began to re recognize the purpose behind my mother's decision. I even began to enjoy it. Coming from a background shaped by her own experiences, my mother understood the importance of equipping me with the tools to express myself confidently. She knew that being able to speak up and being empowered with the skills was very important. As the weeks turned into months, I found myself gradually embracing the art of public speaking, began to see the value in learning, how to craft compelling narratives, deliver arguments, and engage audiences with confidence. Then one day, an unexpected opportunity presented itself, an in invitation to speak at the Voices of Women Summit, my first ever stage. 
suddenly the abstract concept of public speaking took on a tangible form. And I was faced with the task of deciding what to speak about. I remember when I was preparing for the Voices of Women Summit, one question I was frequently asked is, what inspires you? My mind immediately, immediately went back to my visit to Zambia, Africa. In 2016, I vividly remember visiting my mom's school, and then we went to a shopping mall. At that shopping mall, I noticed many girls my age working instead of attending schools. I asked my mom, why aren't they at school? And she replied that their families could not afford an education based on their financial situation. And that broke my heart and sparked a determination for me to find a solution. This experience became the focal point of my talk at the Voices of Women Summit. Reflecting on it, I realized that everything I spoke about it was at that moment, consciously or not, inspired by my mom. This summit became a catalyst for what my speaking coach calls the speaking bug. Subsequently, I spoke at more summits, which turned into me contributing to books, which turned into me giving keynotes. And at one point, I even delivered a TEDx talk, all because my mom enrolled me in those speaking classes. I've come to refer my, to my speaking as my genius because it's something that I genuinely enjoy and believe inspires others. My mother's background, having attended school in a slightly underprivileged community in Africa, played a crucial role in shaping my journey. Had she not seen the importance of public speaking, I never would have been able to attend that first public speaking class, which then snowballed into me being able to share my message with an audience. Recently, she re reconnected with many successful al alumni from her school and was surprised by their achievements. She organized an online summit where the alumni could inspire current students at that school, demonstrating her own genius for inspiring others. My speaking journey, which has been rooted in personal experiences and driven by a desire to make a difference, has been deeply influenced by my mom's example. She's always taught me to be able to that, that to be able to inspire others, we need to be connected to our message first. Her initiative to empower others through education and inspiration has had a profound impact on me. I'm grateful to have found my genius in speaking and will continue to use my voice to inspire positive change. Ever since I started speaking, I have noticed a remarkable transformation within myself. It's not just about mastering the art of public speaking, it was about discovering my own potential and living up to it in every aspect of my life. The confidence that I gained from speaking and has, has come into every corner of my life, empowering me to take on new challenges and embrace opportunities with courage. This journey has taught me a valuable lesson. Finding your genius can unlock doors you never knew existed. It's about identifying what truly ignites your passion and leveraging that to make a meaningful impact in the world. For me, it was speaking, but for others, it might be something entirely different, whether it's writing, painting, coding, or any other pursuit. So how do you find your own genius? It starts with exploration, exploring your interest, trying new things, and paying attention to what brings you joy and fulfillment. It's about listening to that inner voice that guides you towards your true calling, even if it may seem unconventional at first. But more importantly, finding your genius requires courage, the courage to step outside of your comfort zone, the courage to embrace failures. For me, the courage was joining those public speaking classes and participating. I really didn't want to at first, but based on my mom's example, I decided to take her word for it, and that led me here. Life is basically another form of that car ride I had when I was four. A constant battle on whether to speak up or to not. From the young age of four, my mom helped me find my voice, which resulted in me finding my genius. When she persevered to get me those speaking classes, when she persevered to do everything she's done for me, I was able to, she persevered, so I was able to persevere. She gave me a push into those speaking classes and I persevered through them and that led me to where I am today. Thank you. <laughs> that was <Wow>. absolutely amazing. <laughs> wow, I'm blown away. <laughs> my buttons are popping off my shirt there, Uma, because I'm so proud. <laughs> 
<laughs> and we got we got to you in the, in the mix to just say how proud we are of you and just to hear your voice out there. It's just so inspiring. And you're yeah. speaking through here. Just my heart's coming right now. Awesome. And I know that there's probably some moms here whose eyes are a little watery because um, you have highlighted so much what they can do for their kids and the ways that they are doing wonderful things for their kids. And Uma, what I think I love the most, absolutely love the most about what you just said is you've taken so eloquently all the skills you have been taught in creating your stories and then using them as a way to illustrate a message of inspiration. And those are all personal experiences. You didn't have to use somebody else's quotes or somebody else's stories. You used your own, you learned the lesson from them, and then you applied them in such a way that we can all be inspired by you. Here. It's, I mean, that's exactly what we teach speakers to do and you have just shown how genius it is and i know your mom personally and i know how important this has been for her to put you in these programs and as you say sometimes moms push and sometimes kids resist a little bit but if we can give mom a little bit of opportunity to be right in her pushing <laughs> then who knows? The sky's the limit as to what we can accomplish. So, so many reasons I really appreciated your message today, Uma. Thank you. Oh, that's just amazing. And it's just thank you for joining us in the Mama Genius um, Festival. And I just love sharing your voice and being out there. I just felt like that was so inspiring for youth out there and some moms to see the possibilities of the not for their kids as well. Thank you so much for joining us today, Uma. It's such a pleasure. Thank you. I was so happy to be here. Thank you. Awesome. Well, I don't think we have our next speaker yet, Jackie, so maybe we'll take a little bit no. of a break. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, we'll, take we'll, take we'll still play the um, uh, Tanzania just one more time, just to let people uh, see what they're doing for something. And again, it's all being a voice out there inspiring kids. And we just want to take it worldwide. So, so we also want to bring it to you. So here we go. One more time. Have you ever been afraid to raise your hand in class? or apply for the school play. I know I have, but not since I've joined the Speak Feed Lead Project. The Speak Feed Lead Project is now going to Tanzania to help the youth there get their voice heard. We need your help to give a donation. Any donation counts. If it's $5 or $100, any donation will help us be able to inspire the youth and change their lives and give them the power they need to speak from their hearts and give them their voice. As, as we ask for a donation for this project, we also want to pass that voice and message along to you as well as bringing more connection to your family. And so we want to provide a guide for you to bring meaningful connections between you and your kids, what we call a morning circle. And it inspires you to go through and really conversate with your kids in a five to 10 minute fashion. I'm not sure what happened. So <laughs> again, though, we are offering um, this circle handout to start to bring some more connections to your family so we can bring more connections to where we want to make sure that we get that exchange of everything. We just really want to uplift the people watching, the people we want to serve, all of you. And in the meantime, we can get our next speaker. So I'll let Jackie go ahead and introduce her. Who is here? Which one? Oh, because <laughs> I can't see them. <laughs> Garangi's here. Oh, Garangi's here. All right, excellent. So, Garangi, <laughs> that's okay. Garangi is somewhat new to our programs at the Speak Feed Lead Project, and I met her because she was emceeing a TEDx event. Well, actually, I met her before that. She was. She spoke on the Voices of Women Summit um, after a telephone conversation with her and her mom. And then she spoke on the summit. And the next thing I know, she's emceeing a TEDx event right after she started working with me. So she's pretty amazing, too. Amazing. You know, what's, what's really amazing about Garangi is that at 10 years old, she started a nonprofit. She started a nonprofit during the pandemic because she saw the need that kids like her had 
and being away from their friends and not being able to engage like they were used to, not even being able to get to the library and check out books. And Garangi said, I'm going to do something about that. And she did. I don't want to steal her thunder because she's probably going to tell you a little bit about that in her message. But Garangi, I'm so very proud of you. And as you can see under her name is the URL or at least the website name of her nonprofit. So I hope you'll all go to check that out. But let's welcome Garangi Gupta, who's only 14 years old. So excited to have you. Oh, my God. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Right now, we just can't wait to hear your message, and we'll give you the full stage. So we'll see you in a little bit, okay? Hi, everybody. My name is Garangi Gupta, and I am the founder of Youth for Us. And um, so let me just talk a little bit about my story. So um, first of all, I remember when I was three years old, I had a I had a day where me and my family were planning on going to the beach. And this day was some it, the weather was finally warming up and we were so excited to go to the beach. And um, when we finally got there, I was three years old. I was so impatient for my parents. So then I quickly ran out of my car and rushed down to the beach. But then as I was standing on this beach, I saw my I saw this lifeguard sitting on his really tall lifeguard chair. And so my eyes followed his feet up to his face and there was something really strange about this lifeguard. This lifeguard was actually an alligator and I was frozen. This alligator lifeguard had everything a normal lifeguard would have they had um like the red little cap the whistle and i was stunned and i knew that this lifeguard was telling me to get off the beach really quickly but i wasn't gonna listen it was an it was a lifeguard it's not like it would eat me or anything so i decided to keep walking down the beach but then i see the alligator get up and now I'm really scared because I know that if I don't get off this beach, then I'm going to end up as his lunch. So I quickly run back to my parents. And um, while I'm running back to my parents, they see me and I'm like, oh, my God, mom, dad, there's an alligator and he's going to eat me if we don't get off this beach. But of course, they don't believe me. <laughs> they think it's one of my make believe games that they're so used to. Um, and I'm frantically telling them that we need to get off this beach because they're walking right into danger of the alligator. And then uh, I wake up sweating, panting, and realize it's just a dream. So where am I going at with this story? My service, um, my service giving journey started when I was very young. When I was around eight years old, I was already volunteering at my sister's school and I was reading books to um, books to her classmates and her. They were all in preschool, and it was really fun um, reading books to really little kids and s having them run up and hug me. And I was also inspired by my mom. And my mom, um, she is working at her office, but she's also spending a lot of her time giving back to the community. And my mom, she works at Microsoft, but also she donates meals to um, Sophia's Way every month. And she teaches UW students um, at Microsoft in her free time to volunteer and give back. So I naturally picked up on some of her passions of giving back to the community. And when COVID hit us, um, I was 10 years old and I was missing all of my greatest social outlets because I used to go to school every single day in person. And now all of that was taken away from me, like going to the library and checking out books, um, riding the bus to school with my friends every single day. And I was missing all of my greatest social outlets. Now, I know that there were other kids um, in my spot and they were also missing all their um, social outlets and interactions. 
And I knew that this was a problem that I needed to fix because I knew how bad it felt to just be stuck and locked up at home. It was like, it was like, um, and you're in a jail cell and you're just watching your friends on the other side of the bars, um, not quite able to reach them. And so my first thought was to um, start a porch pickup drive because I knew that whatever my solution was for this problem, it had to be connected to community giving and community giving back. And so um, I took inspiration from my mom and her community giving, and I started a porch pickup drive where I created a kit that kids could pick up off my porch, work on at home, drop back, and then um, and then I'd donate them further to hospitals and schools and um and then it was such a big success because we donated over 400 kits in two months and it was really inspiring for me to see all the kids in my neighborhood and community coming together working on a kit and then all of our hard work going off and getting donated um and it was just a really good feeling and so my mom was always a huge inspiration for me in all of my community giving projects. And she was sort of the motivation for me to um, keep going and to explore new projects. Like, for example, I run a Redmond Children Business Fair every single summer. And the first summer I did it, um, my mom was there every step of the way to help and support me. And um, basically the Redmond Children Business Fair is a way for um, kids starting at the age of four to the age of 17 to really explore their passions for a day and um, to um, to learn a lot of new entrepreneurial um, skills like um, handling customer requests, taking in feedback and compliments, um, working around situations that maybe don't go as planned. And again, they pick up on so many different skills while exploring their passion. And these Redmond Children Business Fairs, they have one rule. And this rule is, well, besides having fun, this rule is that whatever they make um, and sell has to be made themselves. They can't go to the store and buy something else, but they have to sort of use their own creativity and imagination to um, find something that customers would love. And um, and this Redmond Children Business Fair, um, it happens every summer. And this year, we're hosting our fourth annual Redmond Children Business Fair. And I'm so glad that I get to do it. And there are so many different projects that I run under Youth for Us. And of course, not without the help of my mom and my amazing youth volunteers. Um, I have so many different ambassadors that are each so unique and amazing. And we have over a um, hundred um, active volunteers and 400 people that constantly check in and sign up for events as they come and go. And again, um, all of my impacts that I'm making are because of my mom and um, her encouragement and support that I've given her. And um, yeah. I'm just in awe of your speakers so much. <laughs> I know. I'm asking moms, do you see how inspiring you are to your kids without even really knowing it? And these kids, they they watch you and they listen to you and they see you. And then when you give them these opportunities, they can run with them. I am in awe as well of Garangi and what she saw as a need for her community. She stepped up and she took charge. And I it's just so brilliant. <laughs> And I love that you brought other kids into it and you have which kid ambassadors and just the way you were speaking about them. I just, the passion and just everything in that. I love it so much. And just, you're so inspiring. And I just love how we can see, give us hope for the future. So thank you. Yes, you're awesome, Garangi. And she's recently applied for her first TEDx talk. And we're keeping our fingers crossed that she gets accepted because she's got a wonderful message to share with other teenagers as well as adults. I mean, we all can learn so much from you, Garangi. Sometimes we, we have these ideas and we don't know how to put them in motion. 
and you just did it. I mean, you didn't think twice. You didn't worry about what other people were going to think or what was the best method. You just did it. And so we can learn so much from you. Thank you. So, thank you so much for joining us today. It was such a pleasure to have you on here and I'm just so inspired. Leaving you're my heart filled. Thank you, Grandi. Thank you. Well, Jackie, we have one more speaker for everyone tonight. Yay! Awesome. That's great. Are you ready to introduce? I am ready and so excited too. These these girls are just brilliant. They're wonderful. I'm so grateful to be a small little part of their life. <laughs> I'm not going to try playing the video right now just because of the feed. Um, but um, again, remember, we're bringing this international. So if you're ready to donate, go ahead and click the link in the chat. So we'll go ahead and bring up our next speaker. You go ahead and start the facing jacket. All right. I don't see her yet, but. Um... No, you, you can just start. Okay, Come gotcha. Here. Okay, so this you're gonna you're about to meet Aditi Kutanor, and she is one of those overachievers. She realizes she's got a dream to go into the medical field, and so right now, even though she's still in high school, she is taking all the really difficult classes. She's she's taking I don't know how many she'll tell you how many advanced placement classes because she wants to be above the rest, the fray when it comes to getting into college. And but this has opened up some challenges for her. So I'm sure she's going to tell you about that. And so Aditi, welcome. It is delightful to see you here and can't wait to have you share your thoughts with all the moms present. Thank, Thank you, you so much, much Aditi, for joining us today. Welcome to the Mama Genius Festival. Thank you. So I'd like to start off with a little story of mine. So when I was four years old, my mom dropped me off at the fire station. I had no clue what was happening. And one day, we just walked to the fire station and she dropped me off. In the morning, she gave me like this really vague speech about how I'm going to a dance class. But I don't really want to go to a dance class. And once we got there, she just kind of pushed me in into a sea of people that I didn't know. They're all wearing matching colorful uniforms. And like I was kind of an odd one out. And I felt so small and odd. And then it turned out I kind of enjoyed that first dance class. And this was a really monumental moment for me as this started my journey in dance. So I kind of started to stick around because they were offering me candy and stickers. Why not? A four-year-old loved that. So going from that, I was I did dance. Sunday was my dance day. I danced every week, just a normal thing. Then later on, when I was about ten years old, I remember one of my some of my teachers. They were stressing about the SAT and the ACT, and it was so it was interesting to watch them because they were so stressed. And then once they got into dance class, I I could tell that all of their stress kind of just went away. Outside, they were stressed. They were like just angry, frustrated. And they came in, and they're just all gone. And when they were done with dance, it was also still gone. So then I was wondering, could dance really make that kind of difference with people? And then another time, one of my friends who I've been friends with for a while, she was there at the original dance class. And then later on, what happened was she quit dance. And then she didn't have this dance outlet anymore. And then when she was a senior, she had so much work happening that she starts to fall behind. She's failing some of her classes. It was a really stressful time for her. And then even though I was taking a pretty similar schedule, I wasn't facing as many of these difficulties. So I was wondering, could dance be that difference? So then that led me to do some more research. So um, a little background about me, though, in this. I take four advanced placement courses, and I'm taking two college and the high school courses. So that's a pretty heavy course load and according and college level AP courses that stands for advanced placement. And there's a company named College Board that runs this for the entire world, pretty, I'm pretty sure. Now College Board, they recommend that each AP course is about an hour of homework. So usually I'm facing like four to five hours of homework every single day, along with all the stuff I do at school and extracurriculars. So this is a pretty stressful type of schedule. And then I was wondering, I still feel stressed, but not at the same extent that I've seen other people in my school have. So I was wondering how dance could make that impact. Then 
I started researching about it because I was really interested in how dance could be making this impact. And then I learned that dance release and any type of movement releases positive endorphins in our body that help us make help us feel better. It lowers depression and anxiety. And researchers Akandere and Demir showed that dancing or doing dance movement therapy for three to three or more times a week for a significant amount of time made a statistically significant change on a person's level of depression and anxiety. And I thought this was so interesting. So I kept doing this. Now I dance every single day. And now I encourage everyone to dance and move. So even though practicing for dance itself, since I was doing more of that also in a way was stressful because I was practicing for a big show, dancing in itself became such of a release it was so awesome for me. So this released all of my stress and just helped me make stronger, smarter choices, made me feel more energized. So with this research, I realized it was so powerful. So dancing provides a creative outlet and it's a way for expressing emotions, serves as a form of meditation, quieting the mind and restoring balance. It was my refuge, a place where I was able to let go of my worries. It was a physical outlet and a mental escape. So when we learn to control our stress, we gain control of our lives. So many high schoolers and many people overall grapple with so much overwhelming stress. They can reclaim this by dancing and moving every day. So just any simple movement, such as walking for half an hour maybe, can be super powerful for someone mentally and physically, as half an hour a day is generally what's recommended for keeping your cardiovascular health in a decent shape. Doing that can also be super awesome for your mental health. So whether that's dance, any physical activities, sports, or just walking, all of that works. You can guys maybe like just take a deep breath or like maybe stand up for a quick second and like maybe like walk around for like in place for a bit. You'll see what I mean. Just walking, just getting up can be that quick energizing feeling. And I think that's pretty awesome. And I would like to spread that. So even though I take so many AP courses, I do so much stuff. I found that dance is a way to stay grounded and control my stress. I didn't want to take dance when I was four. And I was kind of mad at my mom that she pushed me into that fire station. But now I've learned that dance and just movement can be so powerful in keeping people healthy, both mentally and emotionally. So with that, I'd like to thank my mom because I wouldn't be here without her with dance. It was such power. It was so powerful for doing that and with the dance, and now I'm a first responder for myself, and I know I can support myself and other people better. So I've been truly moved by this dance journey, and I hope that you'll make a point to move yourself each day. So something so simple, just as walking, or maybe if you're a little creative, trying dance can be really awesome. Thank you. I'd like to bring Jackie and Michelle back on the screen. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> oh, there's Liam. Oh, there's Aditi, thank you so much for bringing that back to your mom's pushing you into that fire station. Um, and I hope that the moms listening have heard that, you know, when you have overachieving kids, you should support their desires to, to do great things. But there also needs to be this fun outlet. Right, Aditi, there needs to yeah. be something that gets them moving, something that gives them the joy that you have found. And for you, it's dance, but for other girls, it's going to be something else, right? But we need to have something. So um, thank you so much for being willing to be a little vulnerable with that. And now today, here you are, this professional classical dancer. Mm -hmm. uh, you want to go into that a little bit? Tell us where you've performed. Sure, yeah. So I started dancing when I was four. So after a certain number of time, I kept progressing in dance. So last summer, I had a solo concert in India that was three hours long. So that's what I was talking about a little bit earlier. I, I was dancing every day for so many hours. And it was a really big thing in my dance career. And I thought that was so cool. And this is where I started to realize how cool dance could be. Because even though I was dancing so much every day with so much physical exercise as well, I really started to enjoy it. And I was like sure that dance could make such a positive influence. And this yeah. concert of mine was in India. Wow, that's awesome. So you're an international dancer as well. Yeah. 
How cool is that? that is and all the while, and all the while, you're taking all of these high school courses, college mm -hmm. courses, actually in high yeah. school. Wow. Yeah. Sorry, you're just, like you're to showing us, you. But no, I'm just she's showing us the possibilities of what can be, and and when you find your passion and your genius, and you can live in it, and just being inspired by the dance, and I just loved all your little tips of just things you can do throughout the day, just to like bring that that down a little bit. And the more we do those things, and just it was so great coming from you and, and already knowing all these things. I wish at your age I knew some of these things, but it's so great to hear that. And I'm just so thankful that you came and joined us today. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me too. It was awesome to speak here and I love this experience. Thank you for having me. Well, thank you, you know, so and much. And Aditi is taking her idea to the TEDx stage. She's also applied and we're hoping that she gets chosen to present this idea of hers that is a good one. It's a great one on a TEDx stage. So so look for that. She's going to be even more famous soon. <laughs> that is awesome. I just love hearing these voices coming out into the world and just so alive and just so inspiring. And I love seeing you living in your genius. It's so awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you, thank Edie, you for coming on today. these voices to be heard. This was amazing, Jackie. And you know, we have two more sessions coming up on Wednesday. They'll be back to back Wee! in between. And um, we'll just see you all on Wednesday. And I thank you so much, Jackie, for joining me today. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye.